Hey everyone, we are now on part 7 of this series, and this one is going to be a little bit different than the last ones. We aren't going to be adding very many new features, but I will be showing you a few really important concepts. One, we're going to revisit our first person player controller and set that up so that there's no bugs and that the camera works smoothly. And two, there will be a short bug fix section and code review. And the last thing that we're going to get into here is we're going to learn how to make an exportable package. What this means is we can create a single file that contains all of our player controller files, which we can then use to import into a brand new Unity project with just a single click. So after this video, I will do one more final demo, which will focus on using the exportable package and customizing the player controller settings. And after that, I'll be taking your suggestions and doing a final user feedback video. So don't forget to drop a comment below and let me know what you would like to see in those last features. And with that, Let's head into Unity. We need to revisit our first person controller and get that tidied up. But unfortunately, there's a few settings that we need to go through. So first, let's go ahead and just actually delete our old first person controller. It's going to be easier to just edit our current third person controller at this point. Make sure you apply all the changes to your third person controller prefab. This should be finalized now. And then next, unpack the prefab completely, rename it to first person controller. And then we can go ahead and delete the main and virtual cameras, rename dummy camera to main camera, and then check the camera box and audio listeners so that both of those are back on now. And the last thing is set the tag back to main camera. Also, let's remove the third person input script. We won't be needing that. So sorry, this part is a little laggy. My recording software bugged out for a sec. But unfortunately, we can actually see our character's model in first person mode, and it really shouldn't be like that. There's some games that we can play here to make this a lot better. If you go to your camera settings, you'll find this option named culling mask. This is basically telling us what the camera renders, so we could, for example, set it to default, and then we would no longer see our player layer. The only problem with this is that our player no longer casts a shadow. So instead of doing that, we can actually grab all of the body components, switch the layer to default, then under lighting, just change the option to shadows only. Now we can see our player's shadows, but we don't see the actual player mesh anywhere. Of course, you may want to see certain parts of your body, like your arms or body when you look down, for example. My best advice for this is that we just change only the neck and head layers to shadow only, then we render all the other layers like normal. We do get this annoying clipping effect though, I think the best way to prevent this is to first move the camera out in the Z direction a bit so that it's just past the torso, but still inside of our collider. That way we can't look down inside of the player mesh. Unfortunately, as you can see in play mode, this causes us to kind of be able to look through walls, so to fix this now, we can go into our camera and change the clipping plane's near value. I'm just going to set this to uh, the minimum, which is about 0.01. .01. And okay, now in play mode, we can no longer clip through walls and our first person player model is looking pretty good. This is going to be a very short part, but very important. A few people have commented on a few bugs throughout this series, and I want to address them all here. So let me just run through these. Let's start with an issue on the first video where I messed up something in the player controls. Open up your player controls and under player locomotion map, open the left stick action and make sure that the input for the up control is left stick up. I had accidentally set this to left. Okay, so we can save that. Now let's hop into our player controller script. Now at the bottom where we have our is moving laterally function, we want to change this velocity.y to velocity.z instead. This was causing us to be in a lateral movement state if we were falling or jumping. One more little thing is in this script, if we go up to the update movement state, we have this is walking bool. We need to change this up a bit. So I pasted in the updated command above, which is commented. So just change it to the commented one here. And really what this issue is uh, or was, was that we would be in the walking state when walk was just toggled on, even if we weren't moving, like we were just idling. Another one is in our player actions input. I forgot to show this in part six, but at some point I had this late update function where gather pressed and attack pressed were set to false. So I did remove that, but I actually forgot to show that part. 
So just make sure that you remove this in your player controller script and that should take care of that part. Finally, here's the last one. So this is a bit more of a new feature rather than a bug, but someone noticed that you stop very abruptly in the air if you stop holding a certain direction. I think that I agree you should keep your momentum a bit in the air, but I want this to be something that you can customize for your own projects. So let's go into our player controller script to add this. At the top, add in a new float named in air drag, and we just want this to likely be a little more than zero, but definitely less than our drag on the ground. So I'm gonna set this to maybe five or so. Scroll on down to our update lateral movement function, and this will be a real simple. In the drag region, we just wanna make this line float drag magnitude, then if we're grounded, we use our normal drag, else we use our in air drag. Then all we gotta do is replace our old instances of drag with our drag magnitude, and that should be it. So I'll just show you in play mode what this did. So if I set it to something like our old drag around 20, you can see how we don't really maintain any momentum in the air. Some people might actually like to keep this, but most of you probably want it to be a bit less. So I'll try out five for in-air drag, and now you can see that we're maintaining our momentum quite a bit, but we do also just slowly lose our speed a little bit, which I personally think feels best. For me, I'm gonna set this to about 10, but now you can set it to whatever you want and whatever feels best for your project. All right guys, and that's it for the bugs. Please let me know if you find any more and I'll put it in my follow-up video. Man, I know this has been a long journey, but we basically reached the end now. In this last part, we're gonna do something really cool. I wanna show you how to create a Unity package file so that we can easily export everything into a new project. This will be really useful for reusing this character controller across multiple projects in the simplest possible way. To prepare for export, we want to make some presets that can be imported so settings can be shared to a new project easily. Create a presets folder, then the first thing I want to do is uh, make a tag manager. We can do this by clicking on any object in our hierarchy, going to our layers, then you'll see that there's this little settings icon in the top right. Click that, then click create new preset. I'll save this in our current presets folder. Now we have a way of copying all of our layers from one project into a new project, such as the player layer that we've created in this one. I'm also gonna create one more preset. Go to your project settings and then click on player. And now we can click the same options button in the top right and create a preset of our player settings. This one is extremely important for getting our input system set up correctly. Next, we have to specify our dependencies like Cinemachine and the new input system. The easiest way that I've found to do this is to download the Asset Store publishing tools, then you'll have to create an Asset Publisher account on Unity's website and create a new asset on there. To publish an asset, it requires that your package have a readme and a demo scene, so I just made those offline real quick. I don't think it's really worth me showing that, uh, but then we're going to go into the Asset Store tools. You can open up this Asset Store uploader window and you can see that I have a draft asset here. We choose the folder path and then I want to check this include package manifest. That allows me to specify package dependencies, so then I'll go in here and select Cinemachine and Unity input system. Finally, we can click export to create a new Unity package file, which we can import in a new project. So here I've created a new project and there's literally nothing inside of it except it's a URP project. I'll drag in our new Unity package file. It's going to ask if I want to install the package dependencies, so I select yes. And now you can see I have everything inside our project from our player controller. I'll go ahead and just open up this demo scene that ships with the package. Now there's three things that we gotta do really quick before this actually works. First, we need to import our tag manager preset. We can just select any object in the hierarchy, navigate to our layers, click the options in the top right, and then select our tag manager. Boom, now we have imported all of the layers from our other files. Let's do the same for our project settings. This one is actually extremely important because I found that without explicitly importing the new input system, your project settings will by default use the old input system. This will basically not allow the new input system to work, even if it's installed. Luckily, by applying our player preset here, it will take care of all these settings for us. Okay guys, and this is the most important thing right now. You have to restart your project. Whenever you import the new input system into your project, Unity will normally ask you to restart your project. Since we didn't do it through the package manager, it's actually not telling us to do it, but you still have to. 
So at this point, just close and reopen your project. You have to do it. Here I am after restarting and you can see everything is working in our brand new project. Thank you everyone for watching. I really hope you learned a lot. This concludes the development of this player controller asset for now. I will release one more video showing it off, showing how to use it and all that. But if you do want this asset completely for free, there's two ways to do it. The easiest way is to go to my Patreon and download the Unity package file, which I'll link below. But I do want to ask all of you, if you can support me by subscribing to my Patreon or by becoming a YouTube member, I would hugely appreciate it. Your support helps me keep going and continue producing tutorials like this. The second way is you can download the entire source of the project on my GitHub. Both of those links are below in the description. Remember, if you guys have any feedback, questions, or suggestions, drop those in the comments below. I'll be doing one follow-up episode down the road where I patch bugs and add new features that people request. All right, so until next time, you guys, peace.